Number 95. A one liter sample of carbon monoxide, which is CO, initially at STP, is heated to 546 Kelvin and its volume is increased to two liters. Then we have letter A. What effect do these changes have on the number of collisions of the molecules of the gas per unit area of the container wall? Okie dokie. So let's just write out our befores and our afters, right? So we have this gas, right? We'll do, actually, we'll, I guess we'll do it over here. So we have initial settings. And then we have, you know, after the changes, final. Okay, so initially they said that we had a one liter sample. So maybe I'll put V equals one liter. And they said it was initially at STP. Remember guys, STP is standard temperature and pressure. We should memorize those two numbers. When that happens, the pressure in STP is 1 atm, and the temperature, that standard, is 273 Kelvin. Okay, so with STP, and maybe I'll just write that, this is the information that we know when they say anything in STP, standard temp and pressure. Now it's saying that it's being heated to 546 Kelvin. So it went from 273 to a new temperature, of 546 Kelvin, so it's getting pretty hot. And the volume also has increased. So the, the volume also has increased to two liters. Now notice how they didn't tell us any pressure value, right? So let's see, is there gonna be more collisions? Well, let's see where we're at in terms of the, the uh, pressures, right? Now. They didn't say anything about the pressure, so we would have to assume that the pressure here is remaining constant. So I'm gonna put that down here. They didn't say that the pressure was jacked up to two ATM or anything like that, so we're going to say that, you know, pressure is constant. Now we also know this because if we look at our good friend, our lovely equation, uh, we could do, actually we could do a couple of them. But uh, which one? Which one would work out? I guess we could we could look at P. Remember this one: P one V one over T one equals P two V two over T two. I basically jumped the gun, you know, to solve for P two V two over T two. Whoop. Now look here, guys. Our volumes did what? Well, it started with one liter and it went to two liters. So it looks like it went up two times, right? One to two is a two time jump. Now let's do the same exact thing with 273 to 546. If I do 546 divided by 273, oh, I also get two. And what's going on here? Well, it looks like it's increasing also by two times. But now look at what's going on in terms of volume and temperature. They're directly related. So if I actually solve this, right, and I put the V1 as a one over 273, look what happens if this doubled, but this doubled, this was 546, 2 divided by 546 is the same as 1 divided by 273. So the cancellations are, you know, they cancel each other out, right? I increasing by 2 times, they just cancel each other out. So did we really get anywhere? No. Essentially, just because we increased the volume by twice and we increased the temp by twice... It didn't do anything to that pressure. The pressure is going to remain exactly the same. So what's going to happen with the number of collisions? All these changes got canceled out. There's no effect on the pressure. It stayed exactly the same. So there's no effect. There's no change. For the first one, at least. So what effect do the changes have on the number of collisions? There is no change in the number of collisions. Everything would remain the same. So that's letter A. I guess we'll do letter A over here. Now let's do letter B. 
what is the effect on the average kinetic energy of the molecules? And that comes from this formula down here. So maybe if I just bring this a little bit up here, we're now dealing with kinetic energy, which is Ke. And kinetic energy is basically linked with one unit. Remember, R is a constant value, so no one cares about that if it's going to be the same every single time. But basically, the temperature is going to change. Now, what happened? The temperature went from 273 to 546. So in this case, there was an increase in temperature. Well, if there's an increase in this number, what's going to happen to the kinetic energy? Yeah, it's also going to increase. They're directly related to each other. So if the temperature drops, kinetic energy is going to drop. So what's the effect on the kinetic energy? It's going to increase because the temperature increased by a factor of two. So the average kinetic energy is going to increase by a factor of two. So we'll say increase by a factor of two, or you could say, you know, increase by two times. So that's letter B. Now, finally, we have letter C. It says, what is the effect on the root mean square speed of the molecules? Well, this now comes from a, a little bit different uh, formula here, but instead of doing three over two times R times V, kinetic energy also is linked with the root mean square speed by one half m u squared. M stands for the mass of whatever the molecule is. And since it's just carbon monoxide, and it's not like different gases, and the mass hasn't changed, we technically don't care about the M. So we can get rid of that. We're only looking for proportional explanations here. And since the 1 half is a constant value, I'm going to get rid of that because that's not really a real change. The only thing that changes the kinetic energy is the root mean square speed, and they usually say it as U RMS, root mean squared. And then the U just stands for a speed. Now, if we wanted to solve for U, right, you see how it's U squared? We would have to get rid of that square by doing the square root. And you got to be fair, you got to do it on both sides. So that cancels out. And if we did want to solve for u, the root mean squared, this would just be equal to the square root of the kinetic energy. And since our answer in b was that it would increase by two times, the kinetic energy would just be a factor of two. So we could just say that it would increase by, um, we could insert a two in the kinetic energy. So here, we have u RMS would be equal to whoop, the square root of 2. And that would basically be the increase as well. Or if it, you know, if it decreases, if you want to, let's see, plug this in, the square root of 2 would actually be like 1.41. So it still would increase. And they all go together. If you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy, and you will increase your root mean square speed. So those three should all be going in a direct relationship. So your root mean square speed would increase, and if you wanted to know the factor, it would be a factor of square root of 2. And that is the answer to letter C. And that's it. A, B, and C done. Hope for this help. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in later lessons. Have a great day. Bye-bye.